Beards in Review is a video blog where we'll take a look at different facial hair related products. They will be scored on a five star point system. Flexibility, hold, smell, value for the money, or whatever category I come up with related to that product. I'll take a look at beard and mustache related issues trending in the news and social media. We'll take a look ahead at upcoming competition and events. And last but not least, the beard and mustache of the week where I'll pick the most epic beard or stash just because. Today on Beards in Review, we'll take a look at Grandpa's Old Fashioned Pine Tar Soap. This soap is great for beards. It's a vegetable based product that boasts over a 130 year formula. I was introduced to this product with a sample bar that was given to me at a competition. When I got home, I opened it up, took a big whiff, I immediately closed it up and threw it back in a drawer not to open it for quite some time. The initial smell was overwhelming. It smelled like the bottom of a barbecue pit that hadn't been cleaned out in a while. After reading some reviews, I finally broke down and gave it a try. To my surprise, I was quite impressed. It lathered, lathered up nicely and, and it really conditioned the beard. Uh, so for softness, it gets four stars. Although the smell is initially overwhelming, it doesn't linger and typically washes right out. So for smell, it gets one star. For cleanliness and overall effectiveness, four stars. You can find this product in drugstores and some local grocery stores. You can also find multiple websites that you can order from. For overall value, it gets four stars. Grand Paul's Old Fashioned Pine Tar Soap gets a total of 13 stars. The majority of men who have held the office of President of the United States have been clean shaven, including the Founding Fathers. Between 1861 and 1913, however, all but two presidents wore either beards or mustaches during their tenure in the office. John Quincy Adams was the first president to have notable facial hair with long sideburns. But the first major departure from the tradition of smooth-faced chief executives was Abraham Lincoln, who was supposedly and famously influenced by 11-year-old Grace Bedell to start growing a beard shortly before he was elected. After Lincoln, all but two presidents over the next 50 years sported facial hair, the exception being Andrew Johnson and William McKinley. The most recent president to have facial hair was William H. Taft between 1909 and 1913. He wore a mustache. Next year, we will be electing another president, and there is one candidate who is sporting some facial hair, Ben Carson. His goatee does not get the attention it deserves. Did you know that the last presidential candidate to sport any kind of facial hair was Charles Evan Hughes? He lost a narrow election to Woodrow Wilson. That was a hundred years ago. It's good to see that America is finally considering bringing the facial hair back into the White House. As the other Republican candidates struggle to create narratives to achieve their own outsider status and close the gap between them and the front runners, the answer is right under their noses. Grow a beard. December 12th, the 5th Annual North Texas Beard and Mustache Competition hosted by the North Texas Beard Alliance at Rar and Sons Brewing Company in Fort Worth, Texas. February 6th, the 3rd Annual Lower Cape Fear Beard and Mustache Competition hosted by the Front Street Brewery in Wilmington, North Carolina. February 20th is the Come and Shave It number 10 hosted by the Austin Facial Hair Club held at the Mohawk in Austin, Texas. April 30th, the 5th Annual Mid-Atlantic Beard and Stash Championships, hosted by the Canal Club in Richmond, Virginia. Beard of the Week. This week's winner is Jeff Langham. Jeff is known not only for his huge beard, but also holds the Guinness World Record for the most toothpicks in a beard. 3,157 is the number of toothpicks you're going to have to come up with just to tie him, not to mention the room to fit them all in. He didn't even use half of his beard, so if you're going to challenge his title, remember he's got beard to spare. I wonder what else he has in that beard. There's probably some Japanese in there that don't even know the war is over. Congratulations again to Jeff Langham for winning Beard of the Week. This concludes this week's Beard in Review. Be sure to click subscribe for more beard news and reviews. If you want to try out any of these products in this review, click the link below. If you have a competition coming up that wasn't mentioned, Send an email or leave the information in the comments below. For Beard or Mustache of the Week, submit photos to the email listed below. Beard on and beard strong. See you next week.